Hey, welcome back. We're on chapter 24. It's called Veruca in the Nut Room. Mr. Wonka rushed on down the corridor. The Nut Room, it said on the next door they came to. All right, said Mr. Wonka, stop here. And for a moment, catch your breath and take a peek through the glass panel of this door. But don't go in. Whatever you do, do not go in the Nut Room. If you go in, you'll disturb the squirrels. Everyone crowded around the door. Oh, look, Grandpa, look, cried Charlie. Squirrels, shouted Veruca Salt. Jeeper, said Mike TV. It was an amazing sight. One hundred squirrels were seated upon stools around a large table. On the table, there were mounds and mounds of walnuts, and the squirrels were all working away like mad, shelling the walnuts at tremendous speed. These squirrels are specially trained for getting the nuts out of walnuts, said Mr. Wal for, said Mr. Wonka. Well, why use squirrels, said Mike TV. Why not use Oompa Loompas? Well, because Oompa Loompas, Mr. Wonka said, can't get the walnuts out of the walnut shells in one piece. They always break them in two. Nobody except squirrels can get walnuts whole out of a walnut shell every time. It's extremely difficult, but in my factory, I insist on using only whole walnuts. Therefore, I have to use squirrels to do the job. Aren't they wonderful, the way they get those nuts out? See how fast they are? See, first, they, they tap each walnut with their knuckles to make sure it's not a bad one. If it's a bad one, it makes a hollow sound, and they don't even bother to open it. They just throw it down the garbage chute. Look, there, watch that squirrel nearest to us. I think he's got a bad one now. They watched the little squirrel as he tapped the walnut shell with his knuckles, and he cocked his head to one side, and he listened intently, and then suddenly he threw the nut over his shoulder into a large hole in the floor. Mommy, he said, Veruca Salt, suddenly, I've decided I want a squirrel. Get me one of those squirrels. Oh, don't be silly, sweetheart, said Mrs. Salt. These all belong to Mr. Wonka. I don't care about that, shouted Veruca. I want one. All I've got at home is a dog and four cats and six bunny rabbits and two parakeets and three canaries and a green parrot and a turtle and a bowl of goldfish and a cage of white mice and a silly old hamster. And I want a squirrel. All right, my pet, said Mrs. Salt soothingly. Mommy will get you a squirrel just as soon as she possibly can. But I don't want any old squirrel, Veruca shouted. I want a trained squirrel. At this point, Mr. Salt, Veruca's father, stepped forward. Very well, Wonka, he said importantly, taking out a wallet full of money. How much do you want for one of these crazy squirrels? You just name your price. Oh, uh, they're not for sale, said Mr. Wonka. She can't have one. Who says I can't have one, shouted Veruca. I'm going to go grab me a squirrel this very minute. Don't, said Mr. Wonka quickly, but he was too late. The girl had already thrown open the door and rushed in. The moment she entered the room, 100 squirrels stopped what they were doing and turned their heads and stared straight at her with small, beady eyes. Veruca Salt stopped also, and she stared back at them. Then her gaze fell upon a pretty little squirrel standing nearest to her at the end of the table. The squirrel was holding a walnut in its paws. All right, Veruca said, I'll have you. And she reached out her hands to grab the squirrel, but... As she did so, in that first split second when her hand started to go forward, there was a sudden flash of movement in the room, like a flash of brown lightning, and every single squirrel around the table took a flying leap towards her and landed on her body. Twenty-five of them caught hold of her right arm and pinned it down. Twenty-five caught hold of her left arm and pinned it down. Twenty-five caught hold of her right leg and anchored it to the ground, and twenty-four caught hold of her left leg. And then the one remaining squirrel, obviously the leader of them all, climbed up onto her shoulder and started tap, 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 tapping on the wretched girl's head with his, her knuckles. Save her, screams Mrs. Salt. Veruca, come back. What are they doing to her? Oh, well, they're testing her to see if she's a bad nut, said Mr. Wonka. You watch. Veruca struggled furiously, but the squirrels held her tight and she couldn't move. The squirrel on her shoulder went right on tap, 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 tapping on the side of her head with his knuckles. And then all at once, the squirrels pulled Veruca to the ground and started carrying her across the floor. Oh my goodness, she is a bad nut after all, said Mr. Wonka. Her head must have sounded quite hollow. Veruca kicked and screamed, but it was no use. The tiny strong paws held her tightly and she couldn't escape. Where are they taking her? shrieked Mrs. Salt. Well, she's going where all the other bad nuts go, said Mr. Wonka. She's going down the garbage chute. By golly, she is going down the chute, said Mr. Salt, staring through the glass door at his daughter. Well, then save her, cried Mrs. Salt. Too late, said Mr. Wonka. She's gone. And indeed she had. But where, shrieked Mrs. Salt, flapping her arms. What happens to the bad nuts? Where does that chute go? That particular chute, Mr. Wonka told her, runs directly into the great big main garbage pipe which, which carries away all the rubbish from every part of the factory. All the floor sweepings and the potato peelings and the rotten cabbages and the fish heads and stuff like that. 
Well, who eats fish and cabbage and potatoes in this factory, I'd like to know, said Mike TV. I do, of course, said Mr. Wonka. You don't think I live on cacao beans, do you? But, 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 shrieked Mrs. Salt, where does the great big pipe go to in the end? Well, to the furnace, said Mr. Wonka calmly. It goes to the incinerator. Mrs. Salt opened her huge red mouth and started to scream, Don't worry, said Mr. Wonka. There's always a chance that they've decided not to light it today. A chance, yelled Mrs. Salt. My darling Veruca, she'll, she'll, she'll be sizzled like a sausage. Oh, quite right, dear, said Mr. Salt. Now see here, Wonka, he added. I think you've gone just a shade too far this time. I do indeed. My daughter may be a bit of a frump. I don't mind admitting it, but that doesn't mean that you can roast her to a crisp. You'll have to know I'm extremely cross about this. I really am. Oh, don't be cross, my dear sir, said Mr. Wonka. I expect she'll turn up sooner or later. She may not have even gone down at all. She might just be stuck in the chute just below the entrance hole. And if that's the case, all you have to do is go on in and pull her out again. Hearing this, most, both Mr. Salt and Mrs. Salt dashed into the nut room and ran over to the hole in the floor and peered in. Veruca, shouted Mrs. Salt, are you down there? There was no answer. Mrs. Salt bent further forward to get a closer look. She was now kneeling right on the edge of the hole with her head sticking down and her enormous behind sticking up in the air like a giant mushroom. It was a dangerous position to be in. She needed only one, only one little tiny push, one little gentle nudge in the right place. And that's exactly what the squirrels gave her. Over she toppled into the hole, head first, screeching like a parrot. Good gracious me, said Mr. Salt as he watched his fat wife go tumbling down the hole. What a lot of garbage there is today. He saw her disappearing into the darkness. What's it like down there, Angina? He called out. He leaned further forward. The squirrels rushed up behind him and, Help! He shouted, but he was already toppling forward and down the chute. He went, just as his wife had done before him, and his daughter. Oh, dear, cried Charlie, who was watching with the others through the open door. What on earth's going to happen to him now? Oh, I expect someone's going to catch him at the bottom of the chute, said Mr. Wonka. But what about the great fiery furnace? Charlie asked. Oh, they only light it every other day, said Mr. Wonka. Perhaps this is one of the days when they let it go out. You never know, they might be lucky. Shh, said Grandpa Joe. Listen, here comes another song. From far away down the corridor came the beating of drums and then the singing began. Baruka salt, sang the Oompa Loompas. Baruka salt, the little brute has just gone down the garbage chute. And as we rightly very thought that in a case like this we ought to see the thing completely through, we've polished off her parents too. Down goes Veruca down the drain, and here perhaps we should explain that she will meet as she descends a rather different set of friends. To those that she has left behind, these won't be nearly so refined. A fish head, for example, cut this morning from a halibut. <laughs> Hello, good morning, how do you do? Nice to meet you, how are you? And then a little further down, a mass of others gather round a bacon rind, some rancid lard, a loaf of bread gone stale and hard, a steak that nobody could chew, an oyster from an oyster stew, some liverwurst so old and gray, one smelled it from a mile away, a rotten nut a reeky pear the thing a cat left on the stair and lots of other things as well each with a rather horrid smell these are veruca's newfound friends that she will meet as she descends and this is the price she has to pay for going so very far astray but now my dears we think you might be wondering is it really right that every single bit of blame and all the scolding and all the shame should fall upon veruca salt is she the only one at fault for though she's spoiled and dreadfully so, a girl can't spoil herself, you know. Who spoiled her then? Ah, who indeed? Who pandered to her every need? Who turned her into such a brat? Who are the culprits? Who did that? Alas, you needn't look so far to find out who those sinners are. They are, and this is very sad, her loving parents, mom and dad. And that is why we're glad they fell into the garbage chute as well. Chapter 25 is called The Great Glass Elevator. That's tomorrow. Bye-bye.